Wait, I haven't done that. So for today's video, I wanted to just uh, talk about a few things that I've been thinking about. Uh, my husband's been out of town all week, so I've started a whole bunch of wall hangings. Little ones mostly, and then this one commission. And I thought I'd show you how I lay them out to start. I've started to post a few things that might be of interest. On Pinterest I have uh, how to adjust your tension in your bobbin. Uh, somebody posted that and I've posted it on in some good sewing tips on Pinterest and I've started to do a little bit with a business page for Facebook. I'm posting like photos of the five horses that I painted the other day that I'm going to be stitching here. And as those pieces and the little landscapes get further along, I'll just be posting little pictures of that stuff. I don't know if that's of interest to you. But mainly what I want to talk about today is some quilter's woes. I saw a few minutes of somebody's video the other day where she was introducing a new machine, uh, a, a juki, I believe it's pronounced, that I've been a little bit curious about. And one of the reasons that she got this new machine was because she's in her 30s and she's having some physical issues as a quilter. We tend to hold a lot of tension in our shoulders. And a, a friend of mine, she said uh, when she saw my first test video on free motion quilting that she thought I'd have a bunch of tips on how to, uh, you know, not injure your shoulders. The truth is that I've done physical therapy for my uh, back a couple times and for one shoulder that was partially frozen and we, we worked all of that out of it and the, I loved the physical therapist. I've actually been going to the same one for these different issues a little bit over the years. And what I can say about that is don't let yourself get into that trouble. You know, if you're starting to get a little older and you're sitting in a chair doing a lot of sewing, look into some core strengthening exercises. That will keep you out of trouble with your back. And as you age, look into some uh, good shoulder strengthening exercises to compensate for that hunching over that we can do when we're clenching into our work. And Try to be mindful of how you're sitting and, and just be aware of what you're doing and look for good sources of information. Talk to your doctor. And if you start to have a problem, mine started with my shoulder when I was playing catch with my daughter. And I hurt myself a little and I just let it go on forever. And like I say, by the time I finally went and got help, it was partially frozen. I was sewing through it but I couldn't lift my arm all the way up over my head anymore. I like to get all these strips of fabric out here and, and then I pin them and then I baste them. You know, I want to be honest with you guys. I haven't been supporting myself and my family doing this stuff. My husband has 30 years with the same employer. He's a very uh, sturdy, reliable type of person and he's a technical guy, he's a troubleshooter. And that's why he actually likes it when I bring to him little problems that I have with uh, the sewing business because he loves to try to come up with a solution for those things and he often has. I looked into the, my records the other day and I've sold uh, right around 75 wall hangings. I've made others that I've given away. Um, I've made some that, that we've kept I mean, I'm fond of the ones we've kept, but the truth is, I don't have the best ones here. The best ones sold right away. And the ones that have been around for a long time, I've held on to, and they're my collection of my own work. If you are thinking of sewing stuff and selling it, you know, you meet the nicest people. I have the nicest customers and the nicest subscribers, I'm learning. It's exciting to me because I really want to share this stuff and my hands, I, I haven't really said this before, but my hands have been bothering me for about the last 
eight months, I guess it is. And they don't hurt all the time. I'm more concerned that I don't want to abuse them uh, doing certain types of things and then, you know, really not be functional when I'm old. But in the meantime, my daughter doesn't really have any interest in sewing or I would just be trying to get her to be my apprentice and I would just pass what I've learned about doing this stuff on to her. I hope some of these unusual techniques that I'm doing are of interest to you. I hope some of the gift projects are of interest and I'm just putting this out there so that she has access to it and sometimes she watches things to give me her opinion before I post them and as my husband does sometimes when she's home she uh, is my camera girl which I love because we have a blast doing that and I just want these things out there you know the napkin video has done really well and I haven't I've looked around a little bit to see if anybody else is doing their corners that way because we have washed these napkins probably hundreds of times by now and the thread is wearing out in the fabric itself but the seam holds the, co the corner holds and I'm proud of that design because I thought of it I thought there was a way and I just sat there and played with that corner folding those folds and figuring out there's got to be a way and I had this new edger foot I'm going to show you the oven mitts that I sell and I'm going to tell you that for a long time I was abusing my hands turning those oven mitts and that when I talked to my husband about it he came back 20 minutes later with a little thing he went and made me in the basement and I can turn the thumbs on those oven mitts now with no stress and strain on my hands and that's something that I'm suggesting that you do right away when you notice that something that you make that's nice is selling if you if you do decide to sell things but part of it is a little hard on your hands work on it with if, if you're the type of person to come up with that solution work on it if you know someone who's very good at those types of things talk to them about it look around on YouTube and on the internet for ideas on how to do certain kinds of tasks so that it doesn't abuse one of your body parts because after a while even with a part-time sewing business like I've had you can find that that wear and tear is starting to add up on different body parts and just so that you understand the scope of the, the deal you know, I've always wanted this to be a good part-time job for me, and that's how we try to scale it. When my daughter was a little younger, we were traveling to nearby states for three or four shows in the summer. We were staying close to home during Christmas, partially because of the weather, and we didn't have like a truck that we use for hauling. We were still hauling everything in a minivan back then. But um, I'm hoping that I will be able to keep doing this uh, after my daughter is out of high school and travel quite a bit more once my husband retires for shows in the summer and around Christmas time. You know, we'll probably take the camper and, and do that whole scene. I enjoy the shows a lot. I enjoy our farmer's market. One problem will be if I, if I completely abandon the little stuff. I won't really be able to do the farmer's market and it's it's been kind of nice. Our market's so healthy, you see everyone you've ever known. I have a lot of um, friends and customers and people that are really both who come visit me and buy stuff and it's a pretty good time every Saturday.